All right, let's get started with lesson one, part two, elementary particles. To begin this lecture video, we're going to look at a short video segment um, over Coulomb's law here. Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Chemistry Essentials video four. It's on Coulomb's law, which is a physics law, but also has huge ramifications when it comes to chemistry. And so if we look at a simple atom, this right here is helium. It's going to have two protons, two neutrons, and two electrons. What's holding those electrons around that nucleus is going to be Coulomb's law. And so if we were to look at the charges, the positive protons are going to have a positive charge and the negative electrons are going to have a negative charge, and those opposites attract. That's Coulomb's law. And so that's the first thing um, that he discovered. If we have opposite charges, there's going to be an attraction between the two. Now, the other thing he learned is that you have two like charges. They're going to repel each other. And so those two protons don't want to be next to each other. They're going to be really unstable, and the neutrons and the strong nuclear force actually hold them together. Now, did you see what happened to the arrows? The arrows got larger when we looked at the protons. And that's because, according to Coulomb's law, as those, those charges get closer and closer and closer, then the forces get larger and larger and larger. And so it's sometimes referred to as the inverse square rule. And so uh, let's get to Coulomb's law. And why is it important? Well, again, it shows us that positive and negative attract. And it also tells us that if we have two light charges, they're going to repel. But the closer they get, the bigger that charge is going to be. And so Coulomb's law tells us the force between charged particles is proportional to their charges. So all you do is just multiply the two charges, and that's going to give you the magnitude. It also tells us that it's inversely proportional to the square of their radius. In other words, how far they are apart. So if things are far apart, it's going to be less charge. If the, as, as they get closer and closer and closer, that charge is going to get greater. It's very similar to the gravitational um, Newton's law of universal gravitation. This just deals on the small level with charges. Now, in chemistry, it's important because we can use Coulomb's law to predict ionization energy. Ionization energy is the amount of energy it's required to create an ion. And so what's an ion? It's when you're either losing or gaining an electron. And so ionization is the energy required to remove an electron. And in chemistry, uh, in science, we can actually measure ionization energy using something called photoelectron spectroscopy, or PES. Now, that seems confusing, but it's actually a really simple concept and has huge uh, implications when it comes to understanding what an atom actually looks like. So we can use the data to predict the shell structure. So how do we know that we have these shells and orbitals? A lot of that is predicted through Coulomb's law, but it's also verified through PES. So who was Coulomb? He was a French physicist, and what he was doing was, was studying charges. A lot of people thought there was some law that was... Um, could be applied to charges, and he was the first one to really quantify that. So essentially, if we have two like charges, they repel. And if we have two unlike charges, there's going to be an attraction. And here's the equation right here. You have a, a Coulomb's coefficient, and then we're going to have multiplying the charges, and then we're going to take the radius squared. Now, how did he discover this before we had electronics and even electricity had really been discovered? He used something called a torsion balance. And this is uh, one of his sketches of a torsion balance. It looks a little complex, but it's really simple. All he would do is he would take a, uh, a, a sphere and he would charge that sphere. And so we're talking about electrical, static electrical energy. And so that was suspended by a fiber then all the way down here in the torsion balance. So he could give this a positive charge and he would give this a positive charge as well. So if we have two like charges, what's going to happen when I bring this one? You can see it right here. As I bring this closer, what's it going to do? You can see that it's going to push it away. It's going to repel. And so it would twist this fiber, and he could measure it. You can kind of see the scale on the side. He could measure how far it went. He would then move it away, and he would touch this sphere to another sphere that didn't have a charge. And what it would do is it would transfer half of its charge to that uncharged sphere. He would then bring it back again, and it wouldn't move as far. And so he was able to quantify Coulomb's law using a not super sophisticated torsion balance. And so why is this important in chemistry? We can use it to measure ionization energy. And so what's ionization energy again? It's the amount of energy required to remove an electron. So think of it as just a little hand that has to come in and grab this electron and pull it off. So that's the ionization energy. And so it's going to depend on Coulomb's law how big that ionization energy is going to be because that proton wants to hold it in place. 
And so let's say we were to look at something that's a little larger. So this is lithium. And so lithium is going to have this outer electron out here. And since the distance is greater, in other words, that radius is larger, you're going to require a smaller amount of ionization energy to pull it off. And so that Nobel Prize... All right, so that little video is going to kind of gave you a and a quick overview of Coulomb's law and, and the implications of it in chemistry. So in your study guide, um, what I really want you to understand is that Coulomb's law is essential to your understanding of chemistry. You need to know this law very well and how to apply it between charged particles. Now forces exist between charged particles the force between charged particles is known as the electrostatic force, which we talked about earlier when we looked at states of matter. Particles with similar charges repel each other. You know that. And particles with opposite charge attract each other. And you also know that one. These forces can be explained mathematically um, by looking at Coulomb's law. So here we got a diagram. Um, of charged particles. Uh, we have some charged particles that are repelling each other and that is due because they have the same charge such as these two positive charged particles like protons. And we give them the arrow notation here um, showing that they're pointing away from each other because they are repelling each other. And we'll use that arrow notation often to show two charged particles that are repelling. We also have um, charged particles that are attracted to each other, such as this negative charged electron and then our positive charged proton. And we have our arrow notation that shows the attraction between these two charged particles. All right, so let's get into really what I would say the heart and soul of Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law can be expressed as an equation, um, which is represented here, and I would copy that down into your notes. You do not need to memorize this equation, you just need to know how to apply it. So the F in the equation stands for the force between the charged particles. And that force is equal to K, which is a constant, times the magnitude of charge. And the magnitude of charge is the charge of each of the individual particles multiplied together. And that is divided by the radius squared of those particles. In other words, the distance those particles are from each other. Now, with Coulomb's law here, we can get a mathematical representation or idea about how the magnitude of these charged particles affects the force of attraction or repulsion, and the distance between the particles affects the magnitude of the force of attraction or repulsion. And so here it is in the nutshell. According to the Coulomb's Law equation, a force between charged particles is inversely proportional to the radius squared. Now, inversely proportional mathematically means that if you have two variables, as one variable increases, the other variable is going to decrease. So in this case, as the distance between the two particles gets larger, then the force is going to get smaller between the two particles. On the flip side of that, if you take the two charged particles and they get closer together, then the force is going to increase or get larger um, based on that inversely proportional relationship between the force and the radius. So you can kind of think of it this way. The force, if it, um, or maybe we should say it this way, okay, the distance, the radius, the radius squared. If that radius goes up, 
then the force between the two particles goes down. And that's an inversely relationship. All right, now what about the magnitude of charge? The magnitude of charge, which again is found by taking the individual charges of each particle and multiplying them together, is found to be proportional to the force of those charged particles. Proportional means that if one of the variables increases, then the other variable also increases. So in this case, if the magnitude of charge, the Q1 and Q2, if it goes up, then the force also goes up and it increases. But what about if the magnitude goes down? If the magnitude goes down, then so does the force. It also decreases or goes down because again it's proportional to each other. Now these relationships between magnitude of charge and force and the distance between charged particles and force very important for you to understand. Alright, so let's look at kind of a graphic idea here. We have um, some charged particles and we are looking at the distance between these charged particles. One um, is 0 0.10 nanometers, another um, 0 0.20 nanometers, and finally 0 0.03 nanometers. So we're going to keep the magnitude of the charge constant, but we're going to change the distance that these charged particles are from each other. Now, the bottom number here represents the force or the magnitude of the force between the two particles and it is units of Newton which represents by the N. A Newton is just a unit of force. So what's happening to the force as the distance increases? That's right. The force is going down. It's getting smaller and that again is because again the force is inversely proportional to the distance. So the radius squared, as it increases, as we see here that's going on, then the force is going down. All right. All right, let's take a look at another situation, the magnitude of the charge. Um, if we look at this diagram, you're going to see that the magnitude of charge is going to increase because as we're going down here, we're going to add more protons or more positive charge. Um, so here we start out with one proton and then two protons and then three protons. So it causes an increase in the magnitude of charge. However, the distance between the two particles between this proton and this electron is going to remain constant. So the distance is not going to change. All right. So if we don't change the distance but we increase the magnitude of charge, what's happening to the force as we go down? That's right, it's getting greater. So what we learn here is that again as the magnitude of the charge goes up, so does the force. It becomes bigger and bigger. All right, so this leads us to important understanding about the structure of the atom. The force of attraction between the negative electrons and the positive protons is the basis for the structure of the atom. As we will see more and more of this idea as time goes on. All right. Now, let's take a closer look at the nucleus really quickly. You remember that the nucleus itself is made up of protons and neutrons. Well, the neutrons don't have any charge, but the protons in the nucleus certainly do have charge. In fact, is the nucleus is positively charged, all right? Because of all those protons. 
So we're packing a lot of protons together into a very small space. So we're packing all of those positive charges. What do you think is going to happen? That's right. There should be huge repulsion forces that are occurring between the protons in the nucleus. So why doesn't the nucleus fall apart then? Well, it's because in the nucleus there is also another force that is holding the protons together. And this force is known as the strong nuclear force. And that keeps the protons from repelling each other. And that force is part of the nucleus. All right? I need you to understand that. All right? Now, what is the nuclear force? Well, it's actually an exchange of particles called gluons. And the gluons are exchanging from proton to proton as well as neutron to neutron. And these gluons are so super strong that they hold the nucleus together or the protons together so they cannot repel at all. All right? So that's important ideas. So that's the nucleus. Now, I want to go back to the nucleus and the protons in the nucleus and the electrons. So again, we know that there's a nucleus and it's positively charged. So I'm actually going to write a big positive sign in the nucleus. The electrons, they're found in those electron shells. Mm -hmm. All right, And they are negatively charged. So I'm going to put negative for negative charge. Now, there is an attraction between the nucleus and those electrons. All right? And it is those, that attraction between the nucleus and those electrons that hold the atom together. Again, I want to repeat that because that's really important. It is the attraction between the nucleus, the protons in the nucleus, and the electrons in their electron shells that keep the atom together so that we have structure to it. Now, if you look at electron 1 versus electron 2. Which one of those electrons has a stronger force of attraction between the nucleus? If you said electron 1, you would be correct. Electron 1 is closer to the nucleus, so therefore it's going to have a stronger attraction than electron 2, which is further away. And that again goes to Coulomb's law that the square of the radius as the distance increases between the electron and proton, then the force of attraction between the electron and proton goes down. All right? That relationship is cri critical. All right? Now, you also have electron 3 here. Electron 3 and electron 2 are at the same distance from the nucleus. So therefore, we would say that electron 3 and electron 2 have the same force of attraction between the nucleus and those electrons. All right? So that is all I want to talk about with Coulomb's Law at this point. Please study your notes on Coulomb's mm -hmm. Law. If you need to go back and relook at this lecture video, do so. It's pretty vital. All right, that's it for now. Uh, just prepare for the quiz over this material in class.